Today marks International Men's Day, which is celebrated annually on the 19th of November. This evening, Mohaetsu, we are hosting Deputy Minister of Social Development, Marunali Maharieta Bohopani Mohaetsu Zulu, to talk to us about the significance of this day and to get an understanding on, on what the department is doing in uh, commemorating this day. The department is uh, in partnership with the South African National AIDS Council that are hosting a national men's parliament under the theme institutionalize, institutionalization, Mohaitsu, institutional, institutionalizing, institutionalizing a responsive men's movement. This year, Mohaitsu, two-day national men's parliament is convened under the banner of the Takuane Rimemen Mohaitsu movement that will observe under the theme institutionalizing a responsive men's movement. Rwale Maruna Jano Mohaitsu Obana Totle Telhore Di Papisi Tejalo Di Kono Rulakan Jalo Erko Hamohele Deputy Minister Dumel. What is the purpose of International Men's Day and what does it mean to us in South Africa? International Men's Day is the day where unsung heroes, men, who do great community work, men who represent um, the good of the men, men who are responsible, men who, you know, respect women, men who respect children and don't deny their children. So in, in, in long and short, the men, the International Men Day was founded to actually elevate and celebrate the good responsible caring men who does good work in their own community maruna mutakabua hore under the cloud and under this environment that men finds themselves in with so many inequalities that goes towards bombe with so much crime that men actually are involved in now celebrating this day looking at the climate that we are in also on the background of the 16 the, the beginning of the 16 days of no violence against women women and children we know for the fact that we can't paint everybody with the same brush but the majority of events that are happening and it up suiting the name men are trash how do we see to it that people understand that not all men are in the same environment i've never supported a campaign yeah, men are trash mm -hmm. because i understand the power of language mm -hmm. when we say somebody hit trash and they start to behaving like trash mm -hmm. when you are surprised because you have affirmed it's the same thing but today we are where we are mm -hmm. in south africa because the damage didn't happen mm -hmm. the damage didn't happen the damage happened at the crash when that boy was caught and the child his self-esteem was affected uh, the bullying so um saying men are trash it's it doesn't get us anywhere close to where we want to get mm -hmm. and it is that language that necessitated to say let's appreciate that which is good mm -hmm. let's celebrate men that are good mm -hmm. so that the ones that are bad can actually look themselves in the mirror and say but hunter hunter why kill it and that is important because even as real for 16 days not all men are hippies. Mm. Not all men beat up their wives. Mm. Not all men deny their children. Mm -hmm. Not all men don't pay maintenance. Not all men do all of the horrible murder of women. So we take uh, this moment to salute. Buntate, bumalume, buntate mokulu, burangwani, buabuti including our boy children, mm -hmm. whom we want for a better crop of men. So we can't be feeding them with men are trash. Mm -hmm. Because then you are raising a boy child 
that's going to believe they are trash and how they dress, how they behave doesn't really matter because so are right there off anyway. And I don't know if it does be in Sabatu. So it is important for us together as men and women to create environment that is pleasant an environment of coexistence mm -hmm. an environment where real men stand up to hold their fellows accountable men that can say not in my name men that can say not in my community men that can say not to my sister and also commit to say the same way I don't want it done to my sister, I will not do it to somebody else's sister. Hmm. Now, Maruna, if we look at history, me and you probably come from an environment where we used to say it takes a nation to build a child. Or then today we look at the situation. The situation has turned around to be it takes a selfish individual who's only, I mean, who's, you know, it only takes a, a selfless. Let me just rephrase this. We come from the background that says it takes a nation to build a child. But today's situation, we actually re it to say it takes a individual selfless man to look at the other child differently. So how can we go back to those days of men's compassion to men, Ubuntu that makes a nation to build a child? I think now my advice to men not being a man and endorsing for it really does take a village to raise a child. I think in South Africa we destroyed the village. Mm -hmm. Now we need to find our way back to the village because in the African context, no child was ever an orphan mm -hmm. because fatherhood was never about you having fathered biologically that child mm -hmm. every child was your child you received equal respect from every child you could discipline every child so as we move into the nuclear family uh, setup where we're becoming selfish self-centered we 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 actually break down every support mm -hmm. that we as women we never had issues of support we never had issues of uh, 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 knowing where i'm going to leave my child mm -hmm. because it was a community hmm. and the, being african said we are a community we share we care and hence we once had the slogan that said african men don't abuse women to try and say let's retrace our steps and actually understand where did we lose the road as africans hmm. in africa hmm. what happened because african men have never been known as a species that abuse women but now african men have become shameless they've become monsters there's no shame in a man taking off his pants to a girl child the age of his own daughter and these are the things that would never happen in the african context so we must then now days like this hosting the men's parliament the men's dialogues the, the men's district parliament launching the district champion is to try and say can we just retrace our steps where did we actually got off track where did we lose who we are where did we leave the benaya ubuntu so that we can go back and pick it up wherever we lost it from and that is what we are trying to achieve by beginning mm -hmm. To elevate a day such as this one by hosting the national men's parliament and creating a space a safe space for men because we no longer just want to be a, a victim centered mm -hmm. we also want to say what happened in this person's life for them to be what they've become because nobody is born evil nobody is born an abuser nobody is born a murderer Nobody is born 
a rapist. Something happened mm-hmm. in one's life that actually leads what uh, one becomes. So we, 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 we retracing and as supporting men, also as perpetrators at the department, because we also hosting a, 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 a register of perpetrators mm-hmm. to be able to develop a program that actually prospers the perpetrator so that we can prohibit and have prevention programs so that we know what a, a, a CIPO is likely because we measure a lot of the profile of what perpetrators of rape, perpetrators of GBV, perpetrators of, of you know crimes against children tell us. So let our problems begin to catch people and to help people deal with his issues, his mental well-being before Sipo becomes the perpetrator. So we no longer just saying let's deal with the victim because it becomes an after effect. Mm-hmm. We are saying let's also deal with the perpetrator mm-hmm. so that they can lead us to go and pick up whatever you know Ubuntu where we left it. Now Maruna looking at the psychological impact of the historical background that was never challenged. I know for the fact you just mentioned point there, Horwaiti, Ritzeh Releba, Africa, Itzeh Relejan. Yano, Olebella, Hapeka Hona, how well Baba Dilen, the book at the Holbata, Hobla, Bahu, Setokomorako Barre. Let's look at the psychological impact of certain things that were neglected or maybe what we omitted. Be it from the point of the dispensation to say we lacked a real dialogue, but we were embroiled into a whole lot of things. We are supposed to recheck ourselves from the point of entry, yeah, democracy. How then do we tackle this issue? Because it's like now, most people are now putting the cart in front of the horse. I think we downplayed the impact of the violence that was needed. Uh, against black South Africans by the apartheid government. And we also did not understand the Hori, it's going to be intergenerational. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, healing the mind, our mental health services. Rizaka Rasheba, the mental health of the nation, Rasheba, the political aspect, the economic aspect, Ralebala, the mental health. Ralebala also the impact of migra- yeah, yeah, uh, the migration labor mm-hmm. system. Mm-hmm. Or the impact of the migrant labor system where men and women were separated and actually were in a distant marriage, never coexisted in the same home. Women led the household while men had to go and look for money. When we came back to try and reintegrate the family, we actually never looked at the coexistence rule. Mm. And we forgot Hore, this man used to come home uh, for Christmas only and never actually appreciated or saw the pregnant woman never been there for mm. the birth of their son mm. always found the child being three four five six months old be there for two or three weeks and that has made men cold human beings and what happened the boys are mimicking their fathers because their fathers or their men are their role model. Mm -hmm. So this thing becomes transferable from one generation to the other, to the other, to the other, and the other. Mm. And what makes it now even more uh, as we fought for women emancipation Mm -hmm. and the empowerment of women, we also downplayed the fact that Men were used to women who would keep quiet, uh, women who would accept anything, 
and actually as women stand up and become the provider and the titafule jiga because history said you are to be looked after mm. as the woman and the man was raised to look after you mm. but now how does the man deal with the you being the one that is looking after and him you know changing the roles for it. it is okay to be the one as a man that looks after the children it is okay for me to get out of the kitchen and you get into the kitchen it is okay if i have managed to get that job and brings in the money while you were not the one to get the job it is still a family it is still the same it's okay we also downplayed that and mm. we also miscommunicated issue yeah 50 50. Mm. Uh, mm. that that kind of became like power relations uh, when we actually saying eh, eh, 50 50 i know as a deputy minister i don't want to be i don't even aspire to be one mm. i love the me that i am and i love bringing the me into the position mm. to say it's okay uh, men bring little now your little whatever contribution to what the kitchen looks like bring your your contribution to the cleaning but society doesn't say that as much as give it we downplayed all of these things you can pick up a few examples mm -hmm. women are called hakizala kibizua a business farmer kibizua a gardener mara the man becomes the farmer because there's a commercial Naki domestic worker at Mutuamine, Munaki Batla, Naki cook, Munaki chef. So, what the spaces that women have been occupying that half the time have never actually been paid or been recognized as actual work. The minute the men get into that space, it becomes commercial, it becomes a profession, and then, uh, 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 and it is those things that perpetuate the patriarchal system. Because it, every day we devalue the work that women are happy to do for free, and we put a price to it. So there's a lot of mm, potholes. Mm. Mm. Then we need to go back. Now, Maruna, I'm the two-day parliament. And uh, one would ask, what will be the, 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 the real real uh, point of departure on this issue of the parliament, men's parliament? This is the second men's parliament. We launched the men's parliament in 2018, mm -hmm. which was followed by provincial men's parliament which was followed by district men parliament and we've now just declared the local men the year of the local men's parliament but also the tribal uh, men's parliament which is 2020 to 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, the intention is exactly to do that create a space for men to talk to each other as men to create and fa facilitate dialogue but we're also looking at establishing a men's charter that is going to ensure that men are able to coexist with women men are able to respect women but men are able to change the conversation where they are so the men's parliament as parliament is a public space it is the only uh, body that duly represents the views and aspirations of South Africans. That is why we kept the same forum to say, let us make sure that we, 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 we rally around that which is democratically recognized as the authority to represent the views of South Africans. Mm. That is why we keep the way the parliament. And we are for the first time in a sectoral parliament in the actual National Assembly Chamber where we are affirming 
that this is indeed the people's parliament and all the different sectors because as social development we host the children's parliament we host the men's parliament we contribute to the women's parliament and uh, we contribute to the youth parliament so we do uh, we, we we host the older person's parliament we we contribute to the disability parliament so as a department we actually uh, 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 are the lead department in hosting uh, the different sectoral parliament precisely because we also as a department are responsible for creating a caring self-sustained sustained uh, south africa so we use all the mm -hmm. different platforms to push our mandate now maruna j just on a parting shot just to find out from you hore hole jana we see how makhotla a fedileng ka teng makhosi a nyelela yalo batho ka go ngwega ba tsama ba ya ko different areas say certain things they are loose along the way but my main question ke go botsa gore lona jaka batho ba leng gore you are involved in legislation you are involved in making laws do you sometimes get to a point ya gore le bone gore you know the mere fact that we don't have african law yet we exist in a continent that cherishes norms and values in society looking at traditional methods and all that and we are always looking at the situation where our courts are actually westernized it's roman law that still works in courts and all that isn't there a need to go back to the drawing board and say but us as the continent as africans and there laws that are similar continent to continent or region to region that we can really say let's craft this laws and learnare reken into the world genius record that we managed to find ourselves and created laws that suits the environment of black people even in the continent um oh, all right the social development is the lead department in working with the national house of traditional leaders uh we've got what we call the rock leadership in the corner where we acknowledge for it as politicians we come and go at the as an institution doesn't that's mm. why that program is called the rock leadership program and for the first time we've trained all our head men our horsey kings and queens for five days on social structural drivers so that they are able to be the champions of getting us exactly what you've just said to african law to African uh, things, to African values. So the rock leadership is amongst the success stories that we have managed to implement. And as we speak, when, when I said part of the parliaments that are going to be hosted in 2020-2021 is the tribal uh, council. Mm -hmm. is because we are re-engineering. We are now awakening Bukhosi as an institution. We are now putting the blame at their door why would a child be raped where you govern before you call the police what did you do so we have now uh, through the the rock leadership program they have put the at the doorstep each one of us have a responsibility and uh, now we come and go we change every day Lona, how did we get where we are where we are a country that lives in everything that is wrong hiv prevalence gender-based violence children born with alcohol fetal syndrome alcoholics drug addicts where were you because these are some of the things that we are putting back at the doorstep to say, Kuta, you need to put Melao where you have it, that actually holds everybody in your jurisdiction responsible. Hmm. And you must lead and communicate and lead what we have launched as the department as the village to village program. So my hostility headmen are now champions of village to village program. That social development terms, the social behavioral change compendium, the package 
from mm, boys assemblies men's parliament um youth dialogues uh, w- women empowerment all of the the, the whole package mm-hmm. was split at, at, at their door and we didn't just dump it there we trained them we invested a lot of money in training the 8,980 traditional leaders in South Africa. Marona Kholechalo Eriki Kholeboge kana ko ile Deputy Minister of Social Development Mrs Harrieta Bogopani Zulu Mogaetso na lona re batla nako e ntse re tla re kgone go tlotla re tla re kgone go atlatla khantse Eriki Kholeboge Marona modimo ke o Mojimo kyo to 38 minutes after the hour 6 precisely 22 to the hour 7 the for the the on the 19th of your on November ke tipedi suma mabedi on a Thursday go le tshalo mogais ke tlo go tsaba gwebi ga ke bua ke tlo go bua le bontate ba ba mantota